comes to evolution, political candidates, scientists, religious leaders, and the media have often reduced the argument to believing in either all science or all Bible. You could believe in evolution or intelligent design. The Catholic Church, however, is one entity that actually gives credence to both sound scientific theory and religious interpretations of the origins of the world. Moreover, the Church has often encouraged dialogue between science and religion. For example, the Vatican Observatory was designed to keep the Church on the cutting edge of modern scientific thought, and Father George Coyne, the former director of the observatory and a Jesuit priest, tells us we need to be careful about defining religious belief as science. Scientific evolution is the best scientific um, explanation we have of the aging of the universe and ourselves coming to be in the universe. It's the best scientific explanation we have. If anyone has a better scientific explanation, we would love to hear it. Okay, <laughs> That's my clear take on it. Intelligent design is not science. Okay, it may pose as science, but it's not for, for many, many reasons. Um, principally because the group, the movement, um, has never published a scientific paper in a peer-reviewed scientific journal. Many practicing Catholics get confused when they start to put their critical reasoning alongside what they know about stories of the Bible. Catholics, however, are not fundamentalists. They do not consider the Bible to be a history book, a biography, and certainly, it's not a science textbook either. The Judaic Christian scriptures, so they date from about 5,000 years before Christ um, until about 200 years after Christ. Modern science, as we know it, dates from very roughly the 16th, 17th centuries, okay? with Galileo. I'll take it back to Roger Bacon, mm -hmm. the you know, twelve hundreds or so. From Galileo to Leibniz to Newton to Einstein, etc. You can trace the history. But it's clear that modern science as we do it today did not begin until about the fifteenth, sixteenth centuries. How could there be any science in scripture? The one thing they couldn't do was write science since it didn't exist. And as a matter of fact, throughout scripture, they have no scientific mentality. But for many years, scientists would try to square their scientific findings with the scripture stories you find in the book of Genesis. Father Coyne tells us these two worlds are simply incompatible. If you take them scientifically, you're in a, you're in a mess. I mean, just take God created light on the first day. Or, he created the sun and the stars on the fourth day. Where the hell did that light come from on the first day? All light comes from the sun and the stars. All light. The light bulb above my head, you can trace back the energy that supplies it came from the sun through fossil fuels, etc., etc. So what Genesis is, um, is a beautiful story. It's not science. Even when Charles Darwin first began to publish his theories of evolution, they were met with some skepticism by the church. The church didn't have a problem with his theory of humans evolving from lesser creatures, but rather that they did so spontaneously. That one word caused the bishops at the Council of Cologne in 1860 to not give full assent to Darwin's findings. But years later, Pope Leo XIII issued a papal encyclical, a letter outlining a particular Catholic teaching. This one entitled, Proventissimus Deus, on the study of Holy Scripture. And the Pope recommended that both theologians and scientists simply confine themselves to their own lines. And he emphatically stated that the writers of sacred scripture had no intention of teaching people the nature of the visible universe. More recently, in 1950, Pope Pius XII, in his encyclical, Humani Generis, The Unity of the Human Race, said that evolution cannot be a total theory of human design, meaning that evolution can't explain everything. And recently, Pope John Paul II, in a letter to the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, said that evolution was certainly a valid scientific theory, and that the Church needs to continue to dialogue with scientists. So we have much evidence that Catholics don't find evolution as something to be hostile toward. However, many practicing Catholics are confused about evolution. 
A group of scientists called neo-Darwinists believes that God plays no role in evolution, and they've been vocal in the media about that. So he asked Father George Coyne the reverse question. What can science say about religious beliefs? Science is completely neutral with respect to religious beliefs, let's say with respect to God. It's neither theistic nor atheistic. And any science scientist who uses science one way or the other is not doing science. They're projecting science into religious belief. Science is completely neutral as such. It, 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 by its very nature, it is. Science seeks material explanations for material effects that are observed. God is not material, so God cannot be an object of scientific research. Exclude it. Period. So where does that leave practicing Catholics? In short, the Church does not condemn evolution, as long as Catholics don't dismiss God from playing a role in that process. On the contrary, the Church also doesn't command Catholics to believe in evolution either. The Church has come a long way since they condemned Galileo for his scientific findings. And as a scientist and a priest, Father George Coyne tells us that science can also lead us to a deeper belief in God. If I do believe in God, and I do, not because of my science, but for other reasons and going beyond reason, true faith is neither totally rational nor irrational. It transcends reason. And so if I do have faith, then my scientific knowledge can be used to really enrich in my faith. For instance, evolution known scientifically, if I say what kind of God would have made a universe like this, well this really deepens my faith because it's not a God who made a washing machine or a car store up parts, etc., and keep it going. God made, created a universe that participates in his or her own creativity. The universe has a dynamism about it mm. through evolution. And, and that's a beautiful concept of the relationship of God the Creator to his universe. For practicing Catholics, God holds all the answers to the universe. And while scientists are uncovering more and more elements of that mystery, our human limitations deny us from exhausting it all. And yet, Catholics continue to support the quest for scientific knowledge, and they remain open to learning more about the mysteries of the world as they evolve.